Welcome, everyone, to a very special episode of Blizz Pro TV. I am your host, Twiz, and I am joined by some people this week that were a very intricate part of making the Crusader the awesome image that it is. Now, for those of you who don't know, Blizzard is celebrating Crusader Week, and, uh, you know, although Hallmark hasn't released an official card for this event, we are uh, going for the gusto anyway, and we are offering up this very special interview. So, as everyone can see, I'm joined by several people, and I'd like to take just a few moments to introduce all of them. Uh, first, in the box that is just below me, uh, I'd like to introduce the lead writer for Reaper of Souls, Mr. Brian Kindergan. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, good to be here. <laughs> it's very, very good to have you. Um, and just to the right of him, I am extremely excited to welcome Andrea Toyas, the casting and voiceover director for Blizzard Entertainment. Welcome, dear. Hello, hello. It's good to have you. Um, now, the two people that are on the other side of the screen are also a very big part of the heart and soul of the Crusader. You may not recognize their faces, but if you've watched any of the Crusader video content, I know you have heard these voices. Ladies and gentlemen, the male and female voices of the Crusader class, Mr. Gideon Emery and Mary Elizabeth McGlenn. It's so great to have you guys here. Hey, howdy, hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Here's, I can give you, I can give you guys some, there you go. There you go. Very, very good to have you guys. So, um, <laughs> did you like that? This we have had some crazy, crazy times before this interview started, guys. So th stay tuned. This is going to be a fun one. I guarantee you that. So, um, okay. Now, on a side note, uh, for those of you who have tolerated my banter this long, I want to let you guys know a secret. And I, I know I just I already let the cat out of the bag. I've had some voice actors and seriously talented people on the show in the past, and this is going to be no exception whatsoever. These people are phenomenal, so buckle in and get ready. Uh, what I really would like to do is start from the beginning. And Brian, let's talk about the invention of the Crusader class, okay? You introduced one class in this expansion, which means that you had pretty much one shot to get it right. How did you determine the general feel of the class and what it should stand for or appear to be? Well, to start, we... You know, as a, as a team, the Diablo development team kind of decided on Crusader. And uh, it, it felt like the natural evolution of the Paladin and a, a chance to do new things. So uh, knowing that, like just having that word Crusader brought a whole host of, of certain ideas with it, right? Obviously somebody heavily armored and tough and experienced with very, uh, a very strong core uh, of faith. Sure. And so all of those things sort of led us to try to figure out a character who would be, um, I guess, would, would come off very tough, but very fair, but also really that level of experience meant that maybe they wouldn't take everything too seriously sure. unless it tied into their crusade. Okay. So that, that then led to needing to find a voice that would evoke all of that stuff. You know, the fact that this person had been in a thousand battles but could also laugh and be witty, um, and then turn dead serious uh, at the drop of a hat. Okay. So that was a pretty tall order. No, absolutely. Dude, I, can, I can't even imagine. Like That was like the short, short, short version. Yes. I, I know it. <laughs> so, oh. um, so then, yeah, I, I took that kind of tall order and uh, just dropped it in Andrea's lap. Like, hey, can you just find us these <laughs> uh, voices that you know, could, could do all of these things all at once? And so then that's that's where Andrea sort of took over the, the search. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Now, well, do you feel like the, the, the Crusader class is, is exactly what you and your team had in mind as a finished product, or were there some cool aspects that you had uh, to leave out? Oh, no, I don't think there was anything that we had to leave out. Um, I think the ways in which it differs from our original vision are, are the, the great developments that happened. Um, as soon as you bring a, a great actor in, or actors, uh, to do a voice, and then you start hearing them say the words, and, and then, you, then you start looking at the words and going, well, those words aren't right anymore. You know, listen to that <laughs> voice. Listen to the way that, that Mary or Gideon said this. You know, we could write better words for that. So, so then it becomes an organic process of going back and forth. Okay. All right. Um, do you feel it's on the same playing field uh, as the other playable classes in the game, or because of its, uh, or because of it being a part of the D three expansion, it maybe got just a little bit more love than uh, than some of the other classes? 
I wouldn't say um, that it got more love. I mean, I think every class in the game got as, as much love as, as the team uh, could possibly give it. I think that the Crusader probably benefits from the experience of the team putting putting the other classes together. Um, so they had to patch the other classes a lot because they, in the course of creating them, they would learn things and they'd go, oh, okay, let's fix that. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be stuff they'll have to patch with the Crusader as well. But for the most part, they brought a lot of knowledge and experience into developing okay. the, uh, the class. And f for me, writing the Crusader, I brought you know a lot of experience playing the other classes and seeing the, the ways in which they, they talked and the things they thought and the interactions they had um, worked and the ways in which I thought they, they didn't. So. Okay. Very cool, man. Very, very cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, as with any type of developer, director, or creator, they always want to add more to their work. And I heard that if developers had it their way, their game would never leave beta because they constantly want to add more. Um, what is one thing that didn't get added that might have been a very cool addition to this class? Well, from... Booth armor. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You could always use more boob armor, especially uh, on the male always. crusader. Always. always. With some sort of firing device. You know, she doesn't <laughs> right. have a gun, or he doesn't yeah. have a gun, but something... <laughs> Yeah. This, is what, this is what our sessions were like recording. We never got any work done. Oh, I, love I guess it. I would just say that I wish there was more opportunity in Diablo in general for the classes to talk about themselves. Okay. Most of their conversations tend to be with um, a non-player character where they, they discuss what the non-player character needs or wants or what they think. Um, and it can just be very hard to really get into the, the, the class, the player character's thoughts. Okay. So I, I wish we'd had more of a chance to do that. Okay. But we'll find a few places here and there. Sure. Sure. And uh, you guys may have been onto something with the boob armor. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> just here to tell you. So. You heard it here first. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Andrea. Uh, I would really like to pick your brain on some things. Now, as I stated before, uh, and Brian clearly showed how important it was that this class turn out amazing. One of the most important things that people can sometimes take for granted is the voice work that goes behind your particular hero that you're playing. Now, you, being the voiceover director, obviously have a huge weight on your shoulders in making sure that the final product lives up to what it's being built around. Can you tell me a little bit about how your process and journey started and how you found Gideon and Mary? Sure. Uh, you know, a lot of pre-production was spent talking to Brian uh, because we, we realized this was a, a kind of a tricky class. We were really excited about it, the Crusaders. Um, but, you know, we, in terms of sound and character, we kind of already had, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, kind of a casual, let's say, wizard. We kind of had that kind of casual, not too bothered energy. Uh, and then we also had the British accent, the kind of dark uh, British accent with the demon hunter. So we really had to early on kind of identify um, who our crusader is going to be because we already had kind of archetypes set up with our wizard and our demon hunter. So a lot of it kind of is, is to Brian and Brian's credit and his team's credit because there's a lot of talking and really fleshing out who our character is, and I think a lot of that came through, especially with the lines I was given to cast with, because you know pretty much the lines are going to dictate uh, what we're going to go for. Uh, so I think you know really hashing it out with the team and with the team, you know Brian and his guys know, knew exactly what they wanted as well, and really had done a lot of thinking about the Crusader before it even came to me. So by the time it hit me to find the Crusader, I really understood what they wanted. Okay. Um, and it was really it was really exciting because I think the Crusaders were fun because you know I mean I love video games and. I'm not trying to say there's characters you hear a lot, but there's the strong macho male sure. or the kind of sexy seductress. And all, you know, there's, there's these kind of male-female archetypes that you tend to have um, in life and in movies and in video games, everything. So it was really fun that by the time the characters came to me, they were so fleshed out that the crusader was tough and, and kind of macho when he needed to be, but kind of casual and humorous also. Yeah. And then the, the same thing for the female crusader, you know, tough and, and, and ass-kicking when she needed to be, but also warm and kind of gentle. So we got to play with these beats. So by the time we kind of fleshed this all out, uh, I kind of already knew in the back of my mind, truth be told, who I wanted. Mm -hmm. So Gideon, I worked with for ages, huge fan, not because you hear Gideon, because I love you, brother. <laughs> uh, but I've been a huge fan of Gideon's work for a very long time, and Gideon was kind enough to do all kinds of stuff for us. Uh, he's also, for anybody who plays World of Warcraft, uh, Lorthamar Theron, uh, leader of the Blood Elves. So I always knew that I, there was some role that I really wanted Gideon to have that would just really match and suit what he does and his sound and who he is. And when the male crusader came to me, it was pretty clear. We, we auditioned and we listened to all kinds of people, but kind of in my gut, 
Gideon was always there. Um, and then Mary, my beautiful Mary. Um, Mary, I love my story with Mary because Mary's name was kind of in my ether for probably two years. Somebody just said, do you know Mary Elizabeth McGlynn? And I didn't know her work and I wasn't familiar with her. But I kind of, I was thinking on the way to this interview, kind of thinking that uh, like a, a Willy Wonka, like I knew I had a golden winning ticket in my chocolate bar. I knew Mary was that. I just knew it in my bones. And then when we talked Crusader, I was, I knew, hey, I've got this name on a post-it note. Literally, Mary's name was on a post-it note on my desk for ages. And I thought, I've got this name, and I feel like it's the one. So I sent the auditions out, which was great, to all the agents. And then I contacted her agent, and I said, can you please make sure Mary reads for this? I, I really need to hear her. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, but you are voice director primarily, so you don't always do auditions. So I was lucky enough to have Mary audition, and I my, opened my chocolate bar, and there Mary was. It was, wow. she just embodied who the crusader is, warm, friendly, casual, funny, caring, and deadly. And as a, as a female in video games, it's kind of tough to be tough and nurturing. Uh, it's something that we always struggle with, but Mary just owned that character and that role so well. That's um, awesome. So I was really happy to find Mary, and, and I'm so glad I kept that posting it on my desk. Awesome. You so know what? Nice. I mean, it's so and I, I like the Willy Wonka analogy, you know, the because, you, you, you know, it could have gone one of two ways. It could have yeah. gone, you know, magic golden ticket, and this is what I was hoping for, or it could have gone, you lose. <laughs> you know i mean it that, could have gone either way sound effect that was well played sir <laughs> she uh, for the record she had no idea i even had that sound effect so so yeah so it was just exciting because they're two you know to get these two people i mean you know i heard lots of great voices for these roles don't get me wrong but to get people who really embodied the traits we were after mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really owned this character to such a deep degree that it kind of and i kind of second what brian says we knew what we wanted then they came in and kind of owned it and it really brought our crusaders to life. So I don't even know if I answered your question. No, you did. Uh, you, you, this but, uh, is... That's how I got these two great people in my life. That is awesome. That is I, so phenomenal. I, the experience for me with auditions was I didn't, I didn't know either of these actors beforehand. And uh, um, it was one of those things where you've heard a bunch of auditions. You know, sometimes it's an eight-hour day of hearing people every 15 minutes. And, right. and, you know, going, my gosh, I've heard, I've heard some great voices. I don't know how we're going to. Side and then in both cases they just walked in and started reading and I was like oh okay there we are <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you, you have my attention uh, yes awesome awesome now um, Andrea do you are you in charge of all of the uh, the voiceover work that's done at Blizzard or just yes. okay every single word of dialogue spoken at Blizzard in all of our games uh, comes through me I both cast it and I direct it all that is awesome it's that is very phenomenal. Me. Brava, brava. Thank you, my love. Thank you. It's uh, crazy. It's, it's uh, yeah. I could, yeah. That's awesome. Um, now, okay. Lastly, Gideon and Mary. Um, I am dying to get into this discussion. Okay. One of the first things, and, and for all these questions, both of you can chime in and whatever. Everybody, this is a free-for-all now. Um, but one of the first things I would like to know is, what were your initial thoughts when you were asked to... Um, be the voices of the Crusader classes. Get in. Um, <laughs> uh, look, I'm I'm always thrilled to 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 work on 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 something new and interesting. And 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 um, Andrea had been really cool. Was like, no, no, I want to bring you. I, I want to find something for you. You know, and she she you know she she sort of expressed that before as well. And and I'd done you know we'd worked together on some things before, but it was it was nice to have. Uh, a character like this, where you can really, you know, sink your sink your teeth into them. Um, uh, and to be honest, I mean, I'm always a fan of uh, being able to use my own. I mean, it sounds it sounds lazy, maybe, but but probably I don't know. Eighty percent of what I do, voice voice wise, is not my own accent. You know, sure. Um, and so it's it's nice to. Uh, bring a little bit of of that as well, and and so there's not that sort of layering of, um, you know, something else to sort of uh, distance me from the, you know, uh, the risk of sounding uh, uh, <laughs> fancy, you know, the truth <laughs> it's okay. kind of thing. And and I'm always I'm always a fan of playing of playing roles where, you know, they have a little bit of baggage. Uh, there's some weight to them. They've you know there's some. I don't know. There's, 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 there's life. You know, they lived. They've, um, sure. They've lived. They've lived some lives, kind of thing. So I, uh, 
that's always interesting because I, I kind of feel like I'm bringing my own stuff, you know, <laughs> my own baggage along. And if, if it plays, fantastic, you know. Sure. Um, and uh, so, yes, I mean, it was it. it and he's fun. And, it, and look, uh, uh, you know, credit where credit's due. You know, when you have great writing and you have great direction and, and you know, and with with a team like this team that you see in front of you now, where they can nuance the performance out of us as actors, um, it's 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 a treat because you you really don't you know that isn't always the case. So it's um, you know these things end up being a, a bit of a gift. Wow. Yeah. How about yeah. You, how about you, Mary? <clears throat> well, um, I got the the call from my agent, and as Andrea said, I I'm, I I direct a lot, and I I don't have a lot of free time, and and uh, I I kind of blew it off because I I was so busy, and then my agent on Monday was like, Mary, send in. The audition, so I was like, "All right, I'll send it in." And I got the call back, and I finally got to meet Andrea. And I knew that Troy Baker and lots of friends of mine have been working for Blizzard for years, and had just raved, raved, raved about you. So to get a chance to come in and to finally meet you, and uh, it was just amazing. And, and uh, to flesh her out with the both of you was just this amazing gift because I had such an image in my head of of what she was immediately, just from the moment. Uh, I read the copy. She was such a strong, well fleshed out character, and for someone with my kind of voice, which is sort of deep and husky, and like these roles don't come on, uh, come along that often. Uh, and then to have this unbelievable character to back it up. I mean, I just remember this opening monologue of the Crusader, and I just thought, oh my God, I just, I just want to, I want to be a part of this woman's life. I want to, I want to be a part of bringing her to life. And uh, and I was so thankful to have you guys there every step of the way to sort of, to, to, it, it, it's, it's a, you know, it's a complete group effort when you do something like this. I'm like, I'm your piano and just play me. And it's so this, it, it was amazing. And, and to be a part of this world, which was so much fun to play with, you know, to play against Troy and, and, you know, the scenes with Covetous Shen and, and all these amazing things happening. I mean, it was really, it, it was a gift. It's, it's not something that comes along that often for sure. Wow. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like like um, Mary, you just said, you know, I already have a good idea of, like, I I, I almost immediately knew what what it needed to sound like, but um, yeah, uh, and that doesn't happen that often. I mean, normally <laughs> you're just sort of like, I don't know what they want, yeah, uh, you sure. know, and uh, I'll just sort of throw something down. But I'm such a huge Game of Thrones fan, right? And not not of the books of the TV, unfortunately. Uh, I'll get into the books uh, at the end. <laughs> uh, but uh, Brienne had come on, and, and I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan again. Mm-hmm. And so I had this image of sort of Galadriel's, the grace of Galadriel, but the kick-ass feel of Brienne. And the two of them came together, you know, nuanced by you two. And it was just, and it just sort of fell into place. I mean, there was really no other voice. We, we didn't really, did we try out a lot of voices that for this? Was, it, it was just... Was- it was you. I mean, it's essentially you with a British accent. And I mean, I think you brought that heart and what you just talked about. You brought that heart and soul. So, and that's the thing I think Brian and I talked about um, is we needed a voice that had all this like, you know, weight and experience and life lessons learned. And, mm-hmm. you know, and just in the sound, we had to believe that she had this whole backstory. And just when you spoke, we bought it immediately. You could have read the phone book and would have believed anything you said. Same with Gideon. <laughs> like, they both brought their own life story and their own sound to it. So we just, we just, the minute, like, like getting saying using your own voice and Mary going with your instincts, it was just there. We didn't have to work at it too much. You guys, it was just I there. I, I want to steal. I want to steal that line though for my epitaph. What? I'm your piano. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's true. I mean, that's what we do as voice yeah. actors. We don't know. I don't know the story. I mean, if if it wasn't for Andrea, I wouldn't know what's going on. I have no idea. Right. I'm entering. Business. That's, that's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Entering this huge world that's already established right. and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are playing in it. And it's just like, I, I don't know what's going on. And if I don't have, you are my light in the shadows, you sure. know, I, I don't know what else to do without you, you know? Wow. Well, and one thing we did for Diablo 3, which was unique, uh, that we, we try to do things differently because, you know, and as Brian could probably talk to, we were so many lines of dialogue, so many scenarios. So one thing in studio you guys got to enjoy is that we kind of made a database, if you will, of all the lead-in lines for our crusaders. So so rather than, because for those of you who don't know about Such video games, generally speaking, you get one big Excel document, you just run the lines, you don't know who you're talking to, you don't know what's going on. It can be quite challenging, but for Diablo 3, one of, Diablo 3 is based on a lot of conversations. 
between the Crusaders and the followers and so forth. So we played lead in line. So often they got to hear James Hong come in as a jeweler, which was magical. And we got to get <laughs> the it was really fun because we, we did everything we could in session to give you that information and context in life so that you could react to the scoundrel accordingly or, or revel in James Hong's glory. So um, it was really fun. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's really, you know, at the essence of acting, that's what it is. It's listening and reacting. That's yep. it. I mean, that's sure. all we do in life. That's all you do as an actor. It's that simple. It's really difficult to do when you don't have someone to play off of. And the yep. fact that every time we come in and, and you'd ask, do you want to hear the lead in line? I'm like, yes, every time. <laughs> I, love yeah. I love it. Wow. So did you guys, um, is there any interaction between you two to portray like a consistent picture of the Crusader across both genders or did you kind of have more individualistic control over the portrayal? That's no, no me. interaction between us. No, I mean we we only met at the. It's, we're the same person. Liz Connor. Yeah, <laughs> we're the same. I've gotten some seen some fan art, but aside from that, and we can't really talk about that because it's graphic. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, ah, I'm kidding. Sorry, hey. I, sh I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, but the. Uh, did you hear Brian? Oh, oh please, did you hear Brian? He just started talking. No, I missed what he said. Oh, go oh. ahead, Brian. Oh, I wonder. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. Yes. Okay, maybe I'll just turn this way when I talk. Um, <laughs> I, I was just saying when you when you get two actors like this, you don't like you usually don't want to try to um, make them conform to some kind of you know. Well, the male said it like this or came off like that, so the female should or vice versa. Um, because their instincts for their own character are so great that uh, you know, I think, I think generally, if the male and female crusader diverged in a couple places, um, that was that was a good thing. So. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a credit to the writing too. I think that when you created the male crusaders, there wasn't copy paste per gender. I think the female right. crusader had her own vibe, and the male crusader had their own vibe. So a lot of the great work to differentiate the two was done in writing as well. It wasn't just uh, wow. That That's amazing. You're, you're trying to basically. Um, uh, convey a personality to two different people, and yeah. it, wow, wow. Well, I mean, and that's what I really enjoyed about Diablo Three because again, I work on all titles, and I don't often have how, how many lines of dialogue. Uh, uh, I think for the heroes, we had like five thousand lines of dialogue, so you don't wow. often have a whole lot of lines where you can actually flesh out and create a robust character. Usually, you know, for World of Warcraft, I have a handful here and there. Uh, but for Diablo, it was really fun because I had a lot of lines to Brian, Brian. Brian had a lot of writing he could do to really bring them to life, and I had a lot of time with the characters to really flesh them out. So it's rare in my experience in video games to have that much context to work with and play with and let her evolve and grow, or him and how do they respond to you know the the darkness and the Reaper of Souls? You know, all it was fun not just for the Crusaders, but all of our heroes got to respond and react in their own unique voice in their own unique way. Sure. So uh, to do that was really great to have that much meat if you will meat to play with that's wrong meat to <laughs> lines no. to I'm not lines. playing the music again to play with is very right on so many <laughs> you don't often have that much material that's what I'm saying material on your meat piano no that's, meat piano. no meat pianos <laughs> Proceed. That, that might be the title of this no meat pianos so. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, getting a little bit more into the actual um, the voice work itself, doing voice work is more than just changing how your voice sounds or the pitch of it. How do you guys get into the mindset when you have to do a certain type of voice? Do you have to look at pictures? Do you have to be given a scenario? We we touched a little bit of, about this with lead in lines, but what what keeps you in that? What keeps the consistency? Want to go first? Sure. Um, well, the minute I saw. I mean, at the first couple sessions, it was just Andrea and Brian. It was just to just tell me where I am and what I'm doing. And the script was so unbelievably strong and clear. And her voice, or the voice of the Crusader, was so clear to me. Uh, and then I saw some concept art, uh, art, and I was just like, oh, good. So I'm in the right direction. <laughs> and every time, I see her all the time. Whenever whenever I'd go into the session, I was just like, no, I... I got it. I, I I know who she is, and and you know I've been looking at broadswords now, and you know sure, it's just like sure. just to have you know put over the mantle or something because it's such a clear, uh, such a clear image for me, such a clear image, and 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 for some reason the voice just just sort of came out. I mean it's really a, it's a it's the voice of the script rising and the guidance that that comes in. That, that made it every session. And I couldn't wait to see what would happen in the plot. You know, we go chapter by chapter, and I was like, what happens next? What happens next? It was so exciting. Wow. So uh, I hope people That's really awesome. enjoy it. 
that's so awesome. That's, I would think that it would be kind of difficult to. Um, uh, oh, I'm starting to get an echo a little bit. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're losing you a little bit. Yeah. Oh, is this better now? Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, I was gonna say I, I think it would be a little bit um, hard. Like, oh, I don't think I sound now how I sounded when I recorded this previously. Well, we always get references whenever we sit down in the chair. We get and we get you know everything is played to us, and and the audio team was unbelievable at making sure that we had references so we knew exactly where we were. And the minute you hear the lines, for me at least, I was right back in her armor. I knew exactly you know, where to start from at least. And then where this adventure for this session was going to take sure, us, you know, sure, so sure. how about Absolutely. you, Gideon? Yeah. I mean, yeah, for, for my part, yeah, same, same sort of story, really. You know, you're going to start with, <clears throat> you know, uh, a picture or some kind of, uh, you know, rough, rough drawing of, of the character and, and, and that's the thing. And then even though when we had those, I think we started as well, if, if I'm not mistaken with those, uh, a couple of those opening, Oh, the mother. The Crusader intro. The Crusader yeah. was very early. I think we had a version that we used in the audition. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The one recorded in the second or third session. Yeah. And that no, was I kind of, it sort of set like a mood and, and there was something, I don't know, there was just the weight of this world. And, and, and I know we spent a lot of time, um, Andre, like nuancing those ones where we would sort of round up uh, mm. uh, like where we've been. And where we're going next, kind of thing. And and I remember you specifically going like, "Sorry, I know we're taking a little bit of time. But like, give me another, you know, give me another few takes, kind of thing." And you'd kind of tweak, tweak. And I, I know I'd always be like, "Oh man, I want to nail this, man. I want to get this just, <laughs> just, just so, you know." And, sure. and a lot of the, a lot of the time, I think you're like, you know, well, you know, give us a few more. And like, I don't know, I, mean, I think we've got it, kind of thing. But here it, it wasn't. It was like it's like uh, uh, really finding. I don't know. It was kind of a theatrical journey with without being, uh, um, but keep, you know, keeping it real. And it was, uh, I don't know. I, I think there's there's something where you know you get a certain team of people together, and and you know, yeah, it's greater than some of its parts. And it's, um, yeah, they were, I think we all really wanted this thing to be, uh, uh, you know, great. Obviously, you guys, because you're you know you're you know, really developing this thing, and we sort of you know come in in the eleventh hour in a sense. Sure. Uh, um, but um, but yeah, I know. I think we just wanted it to be to be something <laughs> special, you know, and, sure. it, and it is special. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and and what, oh, can, can I add? I just want to add one thing that I often talk about, and I'm sure Mary and and Gideon, maybe even Brian talk about. But I want to really identify and call out the fact that what makes our crusaders and all great voice acting great is what powerful actors that we get to work with. And I think you know, I'm sure all of us get contacted about people who want to get into voice acting. And what I always say, it's not voice reading, it's voice acting. Yes. And I think what really brought our crusaders to life in terms of finding the voice is the acting that you guys brought to this role. Because it's one thing you can have the voice, that's great, that's amazing, that's half our battle, but it's the acting and the infusion of your own, your own personal life experiences into this. It's the actual acting with a capital A that sure. I think really made what we got even more powerful because you're both amazing actors. And not just because you're here, but it's really true. So I, I, don't want, I want to make sure we highlight the fact that it's the amazing acting that went into this, not just the voice and everything else. It's it's that last ingredient of, of who you are and what you brought and the acting that you were able to bring uh, into the role. So for me, that's really, really what sold it to me. Awesome. Like just a little splash of like your own personality that just <laughs> seals the deal. And if you if you can come in and just say that before every, every audition. <laughs> every time. That's <laughs> all I need. Well, this really is great. Being, just before I come right? in. And now, <laughs> get in. That's right. <laughs> This is Please, being recorded. You, you send me a copy of that so I can always play that before every session. Yeah, this is. <laughs> this is totally was, gonna rip, I'm totally going to rip that section. Um, I've been taking a lot of kind of stage directing <laughs> classes, and we talk about the fact that, and I know that you guys know this, but people who might not think about acting this way, that whenever you have emotions as an actor, you're borrowing from your own, like you know, your own personal emotions. So people, I don't think, realize that when somebody cries or has heartbreak or is angry, or it, they just see it as the character. But this probably is. I'm probably. Preaching the obvious, but my point is that you're having to borrow from your own who you are right. as a person outside of the game to make right. it real. Yeah. Uh, and I never go tired of hearing that. So I don't know. I want to point that out because I don't know how many people who aren't who don't work in acting they might not think about what goes into bringing that performance to life. No, and absolutely. I think I think also as well, just to, to 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 add to that is the time you guys took with this. You know, a lot of the time, you know, we don't have as as voice actors the. You know, it's it's we've got to do X amount of lines in this amount of time and stuff, and and uh, it's really sort of you know, so you know, oftentimes like okay, three takes, move on, three takes, move on, kind of you know yeah. scenario. So, 
So I think something like this where we really, and obviously the quality of the writing is, 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 is a fantastic starting point because it is so, so much, um, you know, it just elevates everything from the get-go. But, but to also spend that, that time for us to find it and really, um, and that is it. I mean, that is the thing. Is it, it's you putting yourself in that situation and going, this is what I'm going through. You guys nuancing, going, setting the background, setting where we've come from, where we're going, who these relationships are until you, we are at a point where we know those relationships so well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, just, just going with it. Um, sure. I think it was kind of interesting actually now talking about this. So I'm, 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 I'm blah, 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 blah. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> but, Stage is yours. But do we have, we had um, a couple of sequences. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say or not, but I remember where we had to rein in the emotion a little bit. Andrea, yeah. Do you remember? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, where we'd gone. Anyway, we're sort of visited by another character. Okay. You know who I'm talking about. Um, yes. And... I was getting like a little bit sort of, oh, there was yes. a little too much emotion and it was kind of okay, we didn't rein it in because he's still the crusader sort of thing, you know, and it, it's, it's interesting that sort of fine line of where he can and she can be vulnerable yeah. sort of thing, but not too much because you're still, you know, yeah. um, wow. I don't know yeah, if that makes sense at all. It's like talking about things, but not talking about them, but yeah. <laughs> you know, know, generic acting. Go ahead, Brian. Oh yeah. I was going to say, I, I think, can, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. Yeah, uh, um, I feel like most of the Crusaders' lines, um, or a lot of them, work on multiple levels like that. Again, you know, the Crusaders are so experienced, um, so hardcore in many ways, but also, you know, very witty, and they can, they have a, they have sort of a wicked sense of humor. It uh, surprised me. It really surprised me because normally you think I'm a Crusader, you know, but then all of a sudden there are these amazing. Sorry to interrupt. These these oh. amazing reactions with the other characters who were so beautifully directed and acted. So it's just, it was, it was unexpected for me and such a pleasure to play with. Mm -hmm. awesome. But I, yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, I feel like the, one of the, the great things to me was that with working with, with these two actors and, and Andrea was um, just the range. I mean, one thing that happens in writing a lot, as I said, when you start hearing the voice um, come back for the writing, it tends to change the writing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that often happens is you learn that you know certain actors are they're they're really good at say being commanding and forceful, but they're not quite as you know they're not quite as comfortable in the the you know witty repartee zone, right? Sure. And other actors are the opposite. So then you start sort of focusing your writing on okay, there's there's two guys standing there, and one has the witty line, and then the enemies run in, and the other guy goes, "We fight," right? And so right. you you write <laughs> to the strengths of of the actors involved. And uh, with with Gideon and Mary, I just I didn't ever find anything they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. So so that really let the Crusader always be sort of a, a, a rich presence in every scene. Mm -hmm. How awesome. Yeah, I don't think it was easy. I mean I and seconding what Brian says, you know, it's easy if you're the tough guy all the time or the tough female, but to be tough and nurturing. Tough sure. and even the male crusader is quite loving and nurturing, I would say. I mean these are these are I don't think people can appreciate how it's how challenging it can be to nuance those flavors, but we did. You know, my kind of joke is I'm just wrong, like Fifty Shades of the Crusaders, right? But I mean, we really, <laughs> <laughs> but we really did. Like that. <laughs> Our bedroom of pain, yes. Well, it is, but you know, it's, it was with the, with all the characters in, the, in Diablo. Uh, but you really have different shades of them. You don't, you know, and you're not always a tough guy or this. But to to be to be a tough warrior and to also care about uh, the blacksmith and his journey. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice that with, with how clear the 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 <clears throat> each character is is. Uh, encapsulated and, and performed and nuanced and whatever that there are specific uh, you are sp we have specific relationships with each of them mm -hmm. you know and sure. I don't think that all you one often has that in games True. you know yeah. it's like you are this and it's like you are blue and you are blue to everybody kind of thing and, and exactly it is that Fifty Shades thing where where you know to certain characters yeah okay we can drop the guard a little bit you know sure. maybe we take off a bit of the armor yeah. um, you know whereas with other, with other yeah and a it's question for Brian. So, and I, I should know this because I work with Brian. But um, did you, when you start right, just started writing the Crusaders, have to identify how it, how are the crusade how are the Crusaders going to respond towards the jeweler, or the scoundrel? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm even curious about that process myself because we don't think we ever really talked about how you approach how they're going to respond to the, the situation and other characters. Yeah, um, we definitely, you know, planned a lot of stuff out and talked quite a bit. But, but you know, as I say, when when 
when these two were cast, that it sort of started to change everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the point at which the Crusader went from being, you know, hopefully a, a good idea and hopefully, you know, well written in the first pass. But that's the moment at which the Crusader really started to come alive. Mm -hmm. And so then that required going back and rewriting a bunch of stuff now because <laughs> now I, you know, I had a better understanding of who the Crusader right. was. Right. And as I'm sure Gideon and Mary can attest, I'm, I'm not above rewriting lines mm -hmm. right there in session mm -hmm. too. <laughs> oh, which is which is amazing as well. I mean, you, you took know. all the swearing out, so what fun was that? <laughs> right. I mean, really? Come on, come on! <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself, but the fact that we got to let Mary and Gideon be Mary and Gideon, sure. a la Crusader style. That I mean, I think yeah. I often get asked a lot of times for uh, working on video games. Um, is it hard to direct creatures or otherworldly, you know, people or fantasy characters and my answer is always no, because no matter if they're crusaders or demons or what have you, it's still a base human emotion we're going for, period. No matter the race, no matter the breed, no matter the space alien, uh, we're going for a base human emotion. And so I think through the writing, through Brian getting to know Mary and Gideon, and through our, his flexibility to kind of let, it, let you guys be who you are, just letting Mary and Gideon be themselves is really, I think, the secret to our crusader success. Awesome. Uh, and so I think that's really where it all came together. That's that's the formula for a win right there. Absolutely. So um, you guys <laughs> keep talking about lines and I have to ask this. Did you guys do you guys have a favorite line or was there a line that that, you know, was was memorable while you guys were recording it? Like maybe you messed something up or, or maybe you just felt really powerful saying this or what? It, I, I, I kind of I, I have to ask, like, what is your favorite line or your most memorable line from this entire experience? Well, Gideon mentioned during the auditions that uh, they gave us this uh, this beautiful monologue that sort of encapsulated who the Crusader was about taking up your master after your your master dies and you take up their sword and you take up their shield and you take on their crusade and you continue on. And for me, that was it. That was the line. And every time I came in, that's what I envisioned. And to this day, every time I think of the Crusader, that that encapsulates what to me what the crusader is you know every time you get out of bed yes i'm thinking think it right now <laughs> just you pick up your shield and <laughs> yes i do that's I holly that's hollywood really yeah. yeah oh my gosh we should have done the whole interview in your character voices dang it oh. why don't we think of that oh, oh. next time it, next time yes, no one wants to hear me talk like this <laughs> <laughs> i do is i that, know right I mean, who, 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 Master, who, who i'm just talking about shield i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and you and you I, went out into the world. And you said no, no, I, you must not do bad things. You must not be naughty. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of the Crusader. <laughs> how how it's the horrific! Ice Deed version too. Oh, oh scoundrel, you're such a freaking scoundrel. I love it. Diablo <laughs> Four now for download. I haven't, oh. I haven't heard your voices in so long. Is it dorky to ask you to say something in your character voice? Maybe Twiz are going to do that, but I, I, I miss you guys. No, I, 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 I would love to. Phone. I would love to hear. I would love to hear it. What would I, be some lines? I can't think of any lines at all, so I'm just throwing this out. I can't. I can't. That's terrible. I always hate that question because it's like there's like thousands of lines. You ignored our lines, Gideon. Really, you don't care at all. Really, whatever. I care so I, much. So Brian, deeply so about each of them. Well, I can't I, what's a line, Brian? Uh. Oh God! You're asking <laughs> I, think, me to I, I think Andrea. I think Andrea. My favorite line was, uh, "Was what is it you can't face?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What was that? At twelve. Uh, <laughs> um, at my 12, lady. Was the of being home in the family. Oh, oh. I'm lost. Took up my master's shield and name. Well and on that day, I became a crusader. All right, you got that. Action. What was it, what was the first line? At sixteen. Uh, at, at 12, I, uh, I swore the oath, leaving home and family. At 16, I took out my custom shield and name. Get into and on right that now. day, I became a crusader. <laughs> at 12? I, um, I have no memorization. I, it's, no uh, <laughs> memory. I know, that's why we're voiceover actors. I need a script in front right. of me. It's... At 12, I... What is it? At 12, I saw my master was... die. Oh. <gasps> at 16, I took up her sword and her shield. And I haven't been wearing clothes since. <laughs> Is that right? You Was picked that them it? right up. Yep. You should have re-recorded re that. I needed more boob armor for me to <laughs> really complete my crusade. <laughs> This is all for you guys can you can take this entire interview and splice it into the game and I will not say a word. As an Easter egg. Oh, 
All right, Gideon, can we hear your voice at 12? I I... Pretty much. What do I, I need to bring a bit more Sean Bean in there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, your, it's your deep, cool voice at 12. At 12, I, I saw my master die. Yes. At 16, I took up his shield and sword and slayed every one of the evil flamingos. I've got flamingos in a, on a wallpaper. <laughs> this isn't my command. Flamingos <laughs> with That's boob perfect. armor. Boob armor. Your boob armor. That oh was beautiful. Gosh, that Sorry, was so I'm not going to make you armor. trick ponies. I just love, I that was awesome. Boobies. That is that is truly awesome. I mean, there's there's just a glimpse at some of the talent uh, that is sitting on the show that you are watching right now. Um, it's it's truly it's truly phenomenal. People have gifts. They do they do all sorts of different amazing things every day. Everybody has their gift, and you guys are are just absolutely you have found your niche and you are filling it very well. So I'm I'm blown away at the, the talent that is on the line with me right now. Thanks, Twiz. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, no, you got the Crusaders are going to be an epic class. I think the fans are going to be really. It's such a unique voice. We're not just kind of throwing some more heroes in for the sake of throwing heroes in. We've created Brian. Brian and his team have really created a very fleshed out, interesting, fascinating, insightful uh, hero class. And I'm excited to even hear it in game. So okay. Yeah, well, I have one more question for Gideon, and this was uh, from the Blizz Pro staff. Uh, big fan of yours. Um, and this particular gentleman said, um, some of your higher profile roles like, uh, Balthier in Final Fantasy XII, Fenris in Dragon Age II, and Lorthamar in WoW all have an irreverent swagger to them. Do you feel like there's a hint of that in the Crusader? Yeah, there's a little bit. You know, you know what's interesting? Cause yeah, cause with, with those, those roles also tend to lean closer to my own voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and... Yeah, I think, yeah, they have a swagger. Those roles, all of them, they kind of are who I would like to think I am, <laughs> but I am I'm not. sure you're going with that, but okay. They're basically cooler than me. Um, and, uh, you know, on my, on my very best day, maybe I come close to, uh, to being them kind of thing. So, yeah, they do. They, do. they definitely have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of swagger. And, and um, once in a while... Um, you know, some of that might rub off in in, in real life, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a treat. It's a treat to to you know to play these kinds of roles. So yeah, I think I have. Where I, I'm always looking for uh, places where I can inject just a little bit of humor, and I have a very sort of dry sense of humor myself. <laughs> um, and so if it's written where you know there is a little bit of that, and and I'm you know, nudged, you know, and they sort of open the door a little bit, then I'll 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 push through. Yeah. Okay. Very good. What we didn't talk about is both these actors are some of the funniest people Brian can attest. Our sessions, I think we laughed more than goodness. Any. I know. I've... I mean, both of you together, or you could be a comedy routine. Uh, you know, it was. It's... Thank goodness we didn't record at the same. Can you imagine? Oh, it would be oh my gosh! We would record still nothing. Be recording. We had yeah. we had about a forty-five minute pre-show, everybody, and it was it was quite the rigmarole. But um, I will back you from what I have seen, Andrea. You are, yeah, you are not lying. These guys are a stitch, absolutely. It's, it's insane. Brian, are you going to say something, Brian? Oh, I was just going to say, if you could hear the outtakes from their sessions. <laughs> you never will. Those are uh, key, but those outtakes are ridiculous. Are hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Someday. Someday. Possibly. As an Easter egg, I think, maybe someday. There you go. There you go. I like it. There's nothing wrong. Easter eggs are great. So... Mm. <laughs> so, excuse me, how can um, um, Gideon and Mary, how can people find you? How can they find what you're doing and stuff like that? You have Twitters, you have websites, you have, what do you have? How can people find you? Uh, I have a Twitter account at Mary E. McGlynn, mm -hmm. uh, dot whatever, com, what, what, what's the Twitter thing? <laughs> at, <laughs> at, at Mary at. E. I'm, I'm at, I'm at Mary at. E. McGlynn from yes. Jersey. Jersey. Um, yeah. Uh, that's what I've got going on. Okay, very cool. Again. Yeah, I'm I'm at Gideon Emery on Twitter and GideonEmery.com, and then on Facebook there's a fan page which is uh, which is just me. So that's me, and you can yeah hit me hit me up, and I'll I'll I reply to pretty much uh, everything, time permitting. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And the fan check it out and follow us. We'll, we'll just share all, all sorts of uh, irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> I put up lots of cat videos. Witty banter. I don't know. I tweet about the most mundane, boring stuff. But yeah, you um, do. 
You do. You do. But oh, that's, that's what we love Thanks. about you. And You're into space, you are. What's all <laughs> the do. space thing? What's all that? No, I have a huge wow. space obsession. I'm, I'm okay. obsessed with space. Oh. It's, it's pretty cool, but I, I, well, there's obviously the whole other conversation. Yeah, that's, that's, for, that's next week's show. So yes. cool. no, We'll discuss Cosmos as the Crusaders. Next I, week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's probably drink a few. Alien story. Gideon has a good alien story. Alien, the alien. Oh, he is did a, the alien. Did a, we, we did a... No, it's not a good alien story it's at a, all. Oh, tell it. It's no, the best I don't... story in the whole world. It's hey, too it's late a, what, what? The best no. story in the whole world. The no, it's, it's, I, did, I, did some, I did some movie um, years ago in, in, in Eastern Europe, and um, it never really saw the light of day, and we went back it for... Will now. Go ahead. Pa, 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 pa? I always said it will now, but go ahead. After it will now. <laughs> oh, no. the, but, uh, but anyway, it was, it, was, it was lots of fun, but then we, the, we went for the one round of reshoots, and there was uh, this tall, skinny... Skin. It's not that funny. It's really not it's that so funny. It was funny in the booth because lack of oxygen or something. But anyway, there's this tall, super tall, skinny guy who's 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 like at the 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 breakfast table the one morning, and, and we're like, who's this dude? Because we've been living on location in a castle, uh, filming there in the courtyard. I've got a dog scratching at the door, and um, please, Lord, it's a dog and not some like. <laughs> 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 Imagine, Stop scratching. Um, and uh, he's, he's a skinny guy. And then they're like, he's the alien. He's the <laughs> alien. The <laughs> he's, the he's the alien. So basically they were, they were going to introduce this alien uh, <laughs> for, the, for the, like, the pickup shots and stuff. And he was going to be the alien. And, and I don't know, they never made it, it into the movie. It makes me laugh every day. Well, he's the alien. Duh. Duh. Yeah, Hello. Like, I know these things. It, it, believe me, it was funny. And, and I uh, apologize. It's hilarious. Trust me. It's, I still talk about the story. Oh. Schultz in Austria, he's the alien. He's the alien. <laughs> See, Mary it, was, it. it was it was Czech Republic actually. But, awesome. uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, that was the Thank voice. Thank you for that, Gideon. That was the voice. Very happy. Uh, oh awesome. god, John enjoyed that. <laughs> oh. Well, I know Gideon is on a time schedule and everything. I we could I could do this for another hour and a half. So, but um, but I respect that. So, um. That is going to do it for this interview. Uh, quick reminder, everybody, Reaper of Souls comes out on March 25th. So uh, be sure to pre-order yourself a copy if you have not already. Brian, Andrea, Soon. Gideon, Mary, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come on the show and do this. Thanks for having us. Cheers to you guys. Oh, cheers to everybody. Reaper of Souls. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, oh, I still want to make, I still want to make, I want to start a band called Urzel and the Reapers. Oh, that's yes. right. I think oh. it's, it's Brian, the... Brian will make that happen. It's done. Okay. It's done. done. It's oh. awesome. I really want to make t-shirts. Oh, my awesome. God. That, wow. So much awesome. So, all right, guys. From the crew here at BlizzPro, we encourage all of you guys to game safe, love one another, and please, everyone within the sound of my voice, take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Ciao.